Let's talk about the monthly favorite things. But first, coffee. It's much better, but now we have this terrible, terrible light. It's probably going to rain heavily in a couple of minutes, so yeah, <laughs> let's do this. So it's already the end of October. Today is actually the 31st of October, so it's Halloween. Um, so yeah, I thought that that would be the perfect day to show you all of the things that I have enjoyed throughout the month. And there's quite, quite a few things that I'd like to show you, so um, yeah, let's get started. The very first thing is um, a project that I cast on quite a while ago and it took me a really long time to, to finish actually because it's quite massive and I haven't worked on it during the summer month because it was way too hot, way too warm to knit on that. It was on my lap and I just couldn't stand it. And now that the weather is finally cool enough to knit with woolly things, I have enjoyed working on that immensely. And I have finished my herringbone blanket, so yeah, I'm super, super thrilled about it. So, here it is. So that is the wrong side and the right side is here. And I added some fringes on the side. And basically, it's I mean, it was covering my lap as I was working on it. And now that it's completed, when I'm, when I'm working on the chair, I usually have it on the lap or directly on the chair, so that it's kind of hitting my back. And when I'm watching something by myself, I can have the lap, the blanket on my lap as well. So yeah, I love this thing so much. Um, if I remember correctly, I have used seven, I will, I will double check, double check that, but I think that I have used seven bowls of um, knit collage sister yarn which is a hand spun yarn, it's thick and thin. Um, I, will, I will show you more closely, but there's like um, those unspun bits that are really thick and those quite heavily uh, spun, they have a tight twist um, and it creates the most beautiful and even <laughs> thing in the world. And I think it's like the effect that it creates with the herringbone stitch is really, really lovely. So yeah, I love that so much. And the color is so beautiful. From time to time, there's some um, speckles of, I think I only had orange. And I just love, I don't know if you can see this one here. <laughs> I just love when that happens. It's just like, adding a bit of magic to the blanket when you knit. It's just like, I don't know, opening a Kinder Surprise and there's a toy inside. I don't know if you've ever had that. It's something that I grew up with. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's my first favorite thing of the month. Um, and I'm probably going to keep it on the lap right now. It's still chilly and the coffee's too hot, so yeah. <laughs> The second thing is something that I have purchased um, a couple of months ago, but I only use it once uh, since I bought it. And it's actually a pom-pom maker. And I used to make pom-pom with pieces of cardboard that I, that I would cut and then join them together and wrap around the cardboard. And Honestly, I hated making pom-poms. It was just such a waste of time to wrap it around and yeah, just cut the whole layout and then trim it and it was, I didn't, I didn't like it at all. 
and then Lee, who's Lee Sainitz on, um, on Instagram, told me that I could actually buy pom-pom makers. They had large ones and basically it's like two pieces of plastic and you open them. Yeah. <laughs> you open them and like this as well. And basically you wrap your yarn on each side. So they're together and you wrap the yarn on each side and then you close it and you cut around and you just put a strand of yarn to hold all of the bits and pieces together and then you trim it. So basically you don't have to make the cardboard layout every time and you have a beautiful even pom-pom and that is life changing for me because I've knit recently two hats with pom-poms and I just couldn't see myself make the pom-pom for the hat that I've just finished so um, honestly I think that it took me maybe 10 minutes to make a pom-pom compared to um, what I used to, the time that I used to spend drawing the cardboard piece and making a pom-pom I think it used to take me like 40 minutes of torture <laughs> so yeah that's really really cool and this is from Clover. I don't know, I don't remember if they're Japanese or... I don't know. I will put all of the infos in the bar, in the box below, so you can find everything that I will talk about. So yeah, definitely life-changing and they're available in different sizes, um, but since I like big fluffy pom-poms, I bought the big pom-pom uh, kit that came with um, this size and a smaller one, but I will only use this one most probably. <laughs> um, yeah, then the next thing is something that I purchased a while ago as well, and um, I didn't really have the time to just, I don't know, read basically because in the evenings I'm usually working knitting on samples and I don't always take the time to um, do some, something for myself but now that we moved and that we have a bathtub I enjoy taking baths a whole lot and when I'm taking a bath I like to read so I have been reading the Knitlandia by Clara Parks um, and I'm almost done, there's like a couple of pages left and um, it's basically, Clara Parks is basically um, telling stories about her different knitting adventures in different places, for instance uh, Paris or um, Iceland and different knitting festivals and it's just so, I just I just love the, the way she writes, she's hilarious, um, especially the um, Icelandic chapter, it was like my favorite favorite one and I laughed out loud like many times and yeah it's just so interesting to see the insights of the I don't know knitting culture and how her perspective of um, the industry is just just amazing it's so so interesting so yeah I will definitely read the Icelandic chapter many more times because it makes me laugh a lot and um, it just makes me want to knit all of the Icelandic sweaters. Um, I actually find myself browsing Icelandic yarn. I want to try the Plot Lopi yarn so much and yeah, it's on the list and this weekend that, that could have happened. So yeah, for now I'm kind of controlling myself but that will happen eventually. The next thing that I want to talk about is a yarn and I mentioned that yarn in the last video which was my favorite, my stash favorite thing, so favorite yarn stash and I talked about this yarn and the fact that to me sometimes it's difficult to knit from my stash because you know if you have one, I don't know, one skin that for example is difficult to acquire or if it's like a limited edition or if the yarn is discontinued, if the dyer is not in business anymore, if, I don't know, anything could happen to 
a business or to a specific yarn that you love and once it's gone, it's gone. So basically if you knit with it and you're not fully satisfied with um, the final product, yes, you can rip back and start over. But I don't know, I like to have yarn around me and just get inspired by the yarn. And if it's like knit into something that I don't like, and then, you know, I can um, cake it or <laughs> skin it once again. It's just not the same thing anymore, at least for me. It's just like I kind of have ruined it already. <laughs> so, yeah, I just like to keep it in... what's the word? Untouched. <laughs> Untouched. So... Anyway, um, I have broke the rule and knit with something from my stash. I have finished a new design out of Quince and Company Owl and I really really like it so I'm really pleased yet sad because I don't have this yarn in stash anymore. I just have, I think that's 40 or 30 grams left of Quince and, Cow Quince and Co Owl and I love this yarn. Um, I had actually knit three different swatches. Um, I think I started casting on with, let me see, the recommend uh, US 6 and US 7. US 6 is 4 millimeters and US 7 maybe 4.5. And I think I started knitting like with 5.5. That was like not beautiful at all. I didn't like the stitch definition and then I went down to 5mm and I was not happy with it still and I eventually decided to cast on with 4.5mm which is probably US 7. I will have to double check that. And yeah, it's just, just beautiful, beautiful yarn so I can understand why so many of them are out of stock at the moment. Um, and I was actually quite a bit afraid that I will that I would run out of yarn. So I started checking out different retailers in Europe and I think that all of them were out of stock, maybe except um, Loop London, but I'm not sure that they had this exact exact colorway. So basically <laughs> I had no choice but to, but to finish the pattern with the skins that I had and yeah so I'm really really pleased with that I will show you the sample in probably a couple of months because that's something that is lighter um, it's not like super big <laughs> because there's like 440 yards well less than 400 yards of wasted weight yarn so it's not a massive piece um, so I thought that that could be something nice for the beginning of spring when the weather would start to get a bit warmer but you would still need something around your shoulders. So yeah, I will definitely talk about that a little bit later next year. Then I... I've been craving for sweaters because we are most probably going to have snow in a couple of days. Um, they are predicting um, that November this year will be probably one of the coldest ever. So yeah, I came to the conclusion that my wardrobe definitely lacks sweaters. Um, I don't have a lot of sweaters to wear. I have two or three very chunky ones and they're perfect, perfect for home. But when I want to wear them outside, they're too chunky to wear under a coat so basically that means that I need lightweight warm sweaters and I don't have a whole lot of them so I started um, checking secondhand shops here charity shops and I found two beautiful pieces including this one <laughs> um, and yeah I I'm always looking on eBay to find hand knitted things and yeah, I lost an auction very recently and I was extremely frustrated, but let's not talk about that. Um, so I actually went to a new to me yarn shop slash 
souvenir shop slash knitwear shop where they sell uh, beautiful Latvian yarn. So that was super, super exciting. Um, but I think they only had uh, fingering weight yarn, which is um, what I'm looking for in a sweater to be light and warm. But it takes forever. That being said, I bought a sweater quantity of yarn. Um, so that's a 100% Latvian yarn in a beautiful heathery grey color. It's perfect. It's beautiful. Uh, the thing is that <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to be able to knit that sweater because the fingering weight yarn sweater takes a long time and yeah. So I don't know when that will happen but I have yarn for a sweater so who knows. The next thing is a beautiful project bag. Um, I'm gonna try to put my coffee away. It's still hot. <clears throat> a beautiful project bag that was handmade in Canada and it's basically um, it's from Trill and Prince so I will um, show that more closely but basically the bag is completely handmade um, and there's pockets I want to say pockets because I watch a lot of the rings too much so every time that there's something plural I always have this tendency to say I have coffee I always have this tendency to say plural things like baggages, pockets, it's my golem thing, I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> this beautiful bag with pockets, so there's like a lot of pockets around to put, prop, to put the, the patterns or yeah, I usually put the pattern right here. and. There's different pockets inside as well. I don't know if you can see. I have my notes here. And there's those holes as well inside where you can actually put um, the skin of yarn and pass the thread through. And so you can knit from the bag directly. So then the, the ball is not rolling around as you knit. And yeah, it's like box a box bag and when I went to the coffee shop, when was it last week? I basically put everything in the bag. Yeah, in the bag, you know, went outside like this. Because I usually have like my basket with the laptop and then I have two tote bags with different project bags inside and basically I'm carrying my house around when I go to the coffee shop. So I thought that that could be nice to just take the bag, take a lap my laptop in a tote bag and then that was it and that was great. I could work in the coffee shop and not look like a crazy lady like taking things every five seconds from the bag and I could put all of my notebooks in inside as well. So yeah, I really really enjoy that and it comes in different prints as well but I really love the neutral, natural one the most. So I will include links. One last thing that I want to talk about is um, blocking tools. So before we moved I used to have um, yoga mats and it was easy to block things but now that we moved, um, first of all I didn't take, take these with me and now we have hardwood, hardwood floor, so it's basically impossible to put anything wet or damp on the floor. Um, so I struggled a little bit to block things recently, especially big pieces. I have a hat blocking right now and there's no problem for that. But um, for example, I finished a shawl that was super, super massive and I could only block it on 
closes, uh, closes rad, is that the word? Um, but I could not pin it properly, so then I tried on the shower curtain, like, hanger. <laughs> And there's not enough space, so basically I haven't been able to block it as much as I would have liked to. So, I didn't want to buy yoga mats because they're nice, but I don't think that they're thick enough to, um, to pin things. So, I thought of getting those um, puzzle mats for children. <coughs> But it took me a long time to find them and they only had those ugly ones with numbers that you can poke like this. So yeah, they're really ugly but honestly, um, I, with the, the piece that I finished, the owl design that I finished, I've been able to block it really really nicely um, and since they come in like, you know, small squares like this, you can basically assemble them, them together, like you can buy more um, more of them and like make a huge uh, blocking mat out of them and yeah they don't take a lot of space and I can hide them somewhere when I'm done so um, yeah they're really really practical and quite cheap so if you are searching for any blocking option um, I think that that's a really good investment, if you will. And the one that I have came with maybe ten? Nine. Maybe I have one missing. What would I say? Nine. I don't know. Nine, apparently. Um, and yeah, I will probably have to buy more, um, especially to block once more. Um, the new shoulder pattern that will come out very soon and there's no way I can block it with <laughs> nine blocks. I probably need like twice that much or once that much to block it properly. So yeah, I block with these blocking wires and uh, blocking pins and then um, I think that's, that's my favorite way so far to achieve um, nice shapes for shawls especially. So yeah, I don't know if you can notice how different the light is from now compared to the beginning of the video but it's super overcast right now outside and gloomy once again so yeah, very weird weather. So that's it for today, um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video, I will include all of the information, all of the things that I talked about in the information box below so you can check it out and yeah, I will chat with you in a couple of days because I will have a new pattern coming out so yeah, very very exciting. So yeah, talk to you soon and happy Halloween!